Tell her not to follow me. None of you should. Not ever. The first time Karn tried to solve Mirrodin's erection problem, he had left word behind that he wasn't to be pursued. It was a conscious decision. The corruption was taking hold of him. Mirrodin fell because of Karn. In his arrogance, he had shaped the plane. In his hubris, he had left one of his own creations in charge of it. In his ignorance, he tracked Fraction Oil throughout the plane. If he had been more present, he might have realized Memnark had lost his way. If he had paid attention, he might have seen the oil dripping in his wake. But he wasn't present, and he wasn't paying attention. And Mirrodin's fall crushed anyone who lived within it. Don't follow me, he told the others, because all of this was his problem, and solving it was going to kill him. But he had a depression, so it's... Well, maybe he blames himself anyways. And he was right. If it wasn't for Fencer sacrificing his spark, Karn would be dead. A brilliant inventor, teller of awful jokes, and general thorn in the side of most who knew him, Fencer was part of the group that would come to find Karn when he was in the deep throes of Pharesis. Goth and Elspeth beat back the enemy's legions long enough to buy Fencer time to find him deep within Mirrodin's core. Madeira had made Fencer immune to corruption, and Fencer. Time and time again, Karn swore that he'd do honor to Fencer's memory. Fencer had seen something in him. Something worth dying for. If Garn let himself die, he'd be betraying that hope. Which makes his current predicament even more painful. Lashed to a floating piece of slack, he'd held aloft by Norn's choir, made of the same material that had arrested his planeswalking in the caves of Koilos, what felt like years ago. He has the perfect view to the end of the multiverse. Most of his body has been taken for scrap. Karn used to wonder why he could feel pain. People are less likely to hurt something that screams, Ursa said. What a shame fractions aren't people. Karn's in agony. He has no choice but to embrace it, reshape it, make it something useful. An anchor that will keep him tied to what remains of his body. So long as he can feel that pain, he is himself. And surrounded by the triumph of his failures, it only feels appropriate. This is the end of his creations, of the multiverse, of him. Knowing Norn, it won't come quickly. Between Vorinclex's endless taunts and Jin's prodding, Garn has no illusions about what's going to be done with him, what is being done to him. The Phyrexians have been taking him apart, piece by piece, and repurposing his silver body. Vorinclex and Jin have different ideas on how best to do that. But the core idea is the same. And Norn wants to see him suffer. He sees that in her fang-ridden smile. False patriarch, she says to Karn, isn't this a blessed sight? After all your years of stumbling, to see the heights we've climbed without you. Karn does not look at her. Cannot. He has precious little power left within him. With whatever remains, he wants to remember his friends. It is the least he can do for them. Goth sits straight backed even as Jin Gitaxius advances toward him. Of the captives, he is the only one to meet Karn's eyes. The others have all, all have their reasons. Chandra is too beaten to kneel upright, and Melira can't bear to look. Though his heart aches, he understands. After all that they'd worked toward, all their time struggling against the impossible, the sacrifices and the dreams, they are all going to die here because of his mistakes all that time ago. If he were in her position, he wouldn't want to look either. His Mirren would-be rescuers have lost limbs. Some are already being spliced into new monstrosities. When they first arrived, there were dozens of them. Now there's only a handful left. Goth, Malera, Ren, Chandra and perhaps 10 or 20 survivors, which is also, also almost multiple dozens. <laughs> One by one, the rest of them had been dragged off for experiments. Those that remain here, Norn has kept for her own special reasons. One of the chorus members extends herself, her spine unfolding like an accordion to accommodate her new growth. 
She takes Garn's head in hand and holds it in place, forces him to confront Norn. Corexia has posed you a question, you must answer it. It is no wonder you fail to lead us if you cannot do as much as this. Garn is wary, he cannot think of something to say. In the end, he does not have to. Jin Getaxius raises an arm to strike. In the gleam of his wicked claws, Garn sees the ghosts of his past, who better to offer him comfort in a time like this. Soon he will be among them, whenever they might have gone. Will it hurt? Will it be like falling asleep? He's always been envious of sleep. Time to rest. He closes his eyes for a flash of gold to bear, blare across his eyelids. A clarion calls, call shatters the chitter skitter of Phyrexia's great machine. The gathered forces have only an instant's warning for what is to come, had no idea what it might be. As golden light swallows the onlookers, Garn hears the clashing of metal, and because he was built to function in the strangest environments, he can see what has happened in the center of the shockwave now rocking the bridge. An angel in gleaming armor, a golden blade now raised to counter Jin Gataxia's strike. She descends from on high like the lance of an angry god toward them, and when she lands, she craters the metal beneath her. Her impact sends dozens of Jin Gataxia's legions tumbling into the abyss. The choir's delicate bodies aren't meant for an impact like this either. Soon they plummet into the dark, sending Karn's chunk of slag hurtling to the ground. Still, he watches. You will not strike this man down, says the angel. Wait, doesn't he? That voice? Karn is a girl. <laughs> Karn isn't the only one to recognize it. Only an arm's length away, Alice Norn lets out a keening screech. You? When the light fades, Elspeth Terrell stands in the center of the crater. Yet, this is Elspeth as Garn has never seen her, flanked by radiant golden wings the many wounds of her past no longer make her see serene face. Jin Cataxias scrambles backward, his servitors closing ranks to protect his escape. Elspeth, let him go. She spills busy elsewhere, placing a hand on Chandra's swollen face. Healing light flows from her onto the pyromancer. Flash knits back together. Already Norn has shot up from her throne. In her anger, she's thrown it over. Which is impressive, by the way. It's like a very hev heavy metal, which is, they said, looks and feels like porcelain, but is very heavy. Two of her choir are crushed beneath its bulk, exactly. To Karn's eye, their deaths don't seem to have bothered her. You, you are not meant to trouble us anymore. Elspeth does not dignify this with a response, does not look up at her. She keeps her attention on Chandra, then on Koth. The shock on his face is plain to see, but there is hope there too. That, in turn, kindles some within Karn. When was the last time he saw hope in those eyes? We, the might and heart of Phyrexia, address you. Norn flings a chunk of her throne, which is also impressive, at Elspeth. Garn braces himself for Elspeth to come tumbling down, but it doesn't seem to bother Elspeth at all when the rock shatters against her wing. <laughs> it's metal though, not rock. Something ripples through the assembled ranks of Rexia. Something like fear. Something like shock. Whatever it is, they do not like it. Like animals before fire, they begin to pull back. To scatter. The mirrors see their chance. The moment coughs healed, he drives his fist into the ground. Magma shoots up from a burning orange crack in the bridge, running all the way to the base of the invasion tree. Mirrodin, says Koth, with me. But Norn does not seem to hear him. Whatever she can hold, get a hold of will serve as a weapon, it seems. More chunks of her throne. A horn she snaps from a howling vorenklex, the severed head of an unlucky choir member. She hurls them all through the air at Elspeth. Is this how she fights, really? Elspeth dodges, guts and parries, none of the blows land through. Norn screeches again. Jin Gataxius crawls up to Norn's side. The prisoners. You and Nissa deal with them. Norn snaps. We have something more important to intend to. You don't say. That angel? <laughs> Jin X asks. Preposterous. She's only one among many. How? My legions can handle them. <laughs> and Vorinclex will eat whatever we leave behind. 
It would be wiser for you to retreat and leave the matter. Norn grabs him by the throat. Descent is a blasphemy, Prater. It does not stain the tongue of the faithful. Our will is Phyrexia's will. See it done. It is ridiculous that they are having this conversation. Norn must be losing control. Especially if she does not notice Malera running to Karn's platform. A simple wave to Goth, and suddenly Karn is aloft again. You're going to be okay, Malera says. So much of this is hard to believe. Once, long ago, he almost died on New Phyrexia. It was only the intervention of his friends, Fencer, Goth, Elspeth and Malera, that saved him. Now nearly all of them are here to save him again, and Fencer's spark lends him his strength. Don't follow me, he once said to Fencer, but Fencer's spark was in him and followed him all the way here. He couldn't give up. Yet. Ren couldn't give up. Yet. Though there isn't much of Ren left. Though. <laughs> it really says though twice in the same sentence. Though there isn't much of Ren left, though their entire force fighting force has been reduced to only a few broken survivors. Though she can't give up. Though what, ma what doesn't matter if she no longer has legs. Though the weight of the world is still on her shoulders. Though the angel's arrival isn't a surprise to her but a confirmation. Anything else would have been unacceptable because it meant they might all die. Someone came to save them. And it was Elspeth in her new autumn colors, of course. Of course. <laughs> she looks splendid. Though there isn't time to appreciate it. Humans are often distracted by bright shiny things. She hopes her actions will be the same. Chandra. She rasps. Chandra, we need to go. Gold dances in the pyromancer's eyes. She is as distracted by the goings-ons as the others are. It isn't until Ren bites Chandra's sleeve and tucks it that she looks down. She doesn't have arms or legs. <laughs> That's so cute. I can't walk anymore. I need your... <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> it's all the explanation Chandra needs. Yeah, she needs that explanation. Reality seems to set in for her again. She scoops Ren up. You've got it. Let's go. <laughs> Together they take off. <laughs> the mirrors follow, looking back every other step toward the woman who saved them all. And the army they'll have to evade. At least, that's what Ren thought when they were admiring. Karn, shouts Malera. We have to save him too. Got it, says Koth. The slap Karn's on... The slap Karn is on is stone like any other. It answers his call the way wood heats hers. Rens. Garn's slab flies out to meet him. A barrage of arrows and spears bounce off the back of the slab. That's Goth's work too. He's using it to shield the retreat. How? How is it arced then? Won't Garn's head fall off? Hmm? <laughs> if, it's, if it's like... Okay. Ren frowns. The weapons weren't actually hurting Garn. But this still strikes her as a callous thing to do. How long have they been fighting? That they make decisions like this. They deserve peace. Ren wants to bring it to them, but she won't be able to do it alone. The fairy will know what to do, if only she can reach them. And he is go gone somewhere, she won't. And he has gone, he has gone somewhere, she won't be able to reach without the invasion tree's help. She can't reach it without Chandra, and Chandra. Drop the dryads. And there's still hope for you, Chandra. You're smart enough to know I'll kill you otherwise. Chandra had Nissa to deal with. They all do. No matter how fast they run, none of it is going to mean anything if Nissa catches them. And she means to catch them. The elves flinging the bodies of the fallen back at them. It, does everyone just resort to throwing in this moment? Throwing stuff? Her steps certain and inevitable. <laughs> Ren wishes she hadn't turned back to get a look. There's no compassion in those eyes. No mercy, no trace of the woman who was once there. Koth has his hands full keeping the others from getting hurt. Garn's as torn apart as she is. <laughs> Physically. The fleeing resistance. They're doing what they can, but what they can do is a fractionized elven planeswalker isn't much as... Wait. The <laughs> huh? The fleeing resistance. They're doing what they can, but what they can do to a fractionized elven planeswalker isn't much. Why is there a... Well, okay, that doesn't matter. 
Elspeth's distracting Norm. And Chandra, Chandra can bring herself to hurt Nyssa. Ren knows that without having to ask. They need to get to the tree. And they will. Ren's sure of it. Because if they don't, everyone will die. And that can't happen. What she can't see from here is how. All she has is faith. Phyrexia rages, yet it cannot break Elspeth Durrell's peace. It is a peace as certain and solid as her golden armor, as hard won as her battle scars. How is her armor golden? <laughs> chunk after chunk of porcelain comes flying at her. So now it's porcelain again, not stone. Or is porcelain stone? They are stone. I am so sorry. It is a piece as certain and solid as her golden armor, as hard won as her battle scars. Chunk after chunk of porcelain comes flying at her. Wait, does that mean that Goth can control all of Elish Norn's body? <laughs> she does not so much as flinch. These are the desperate actions of a person who knows they are going to lose. Elspeth is above all that now. Once she'd found Norn frightening, once those needle-like teeth had haunted her, Norn's uncanny voice narrated her nightmares with a false god's bravado. Remember always your humility, for it was Phyrexia that brought you low. Elspeth does not find her frightening anymore. She's no longer brought low. In fact, with a single flap of her wings, Elspeth can soar above her. From here, Norn is more of an oversized doll than a threat to the multiverse. Everything seems smaller now further away. All the dross of Elspeth's life has been cut away, leaving only truth. And the truth is that Phyrexia will not win. Beneath her, the Mirans flee towards the tree. Goth covers the retreat with the... with Chandra the Vanguard. Chandra the Vanguard is her title now. Ran in her arms. <laughs> huh? Strapped to a hunk of slag is Karn, Karn's head, who watches her with naked admiration. Though he is in a pitiful state, she nevertheless finds herself smiling at him. After all these years, they're finally going to put everything right. So long as Elspeth can see them safely there, she has to stop Nyssa. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> Ren must reach that tree. But there's a more pressing matter to attend. Someone who doesn't want her running off. Furious, Norn lunches for Elspeth, who is in, high up in the air, so won't work, I guess. She yanks Elspeth from the air oh, by a dangling leg and slams her against the ground. You shall not ruin our moment of triumph. <laughs> really? She didn't fly high enough then? Elspeth's ears ring. Her vision blurs. She blinks. Norn towers above her once more. We have dedicated ourselves to this cause without reservation. The salvation of the multiverse is our righteous calling. How dare you stand against it? <laughs> I have my own calling, Elspeth answers. She stands, dust falling from her cloak. You won't keep me from it. Norn's laughter is enough to chill the blood. Your calling is false, she begins. As she speaks, the bodies of the fallen Phyrexians lift and swarm around her. Pieces fly from their limp forms. Shards of metal, shards of bone, blades and razors, teeth and tubes. Warp through weft. Warp through weft. Norn weaves herself a hideous new suit of armor. On all of the planes there is only one eternal, untarnished truth. All will be one. Any who stand in the way of unity stand in the way of a perfect future. Elspeth looks over her shoulder. The others are fleeing, and Nyssa has broken off to stalk toward them. She can't afford to stay here and listen to Norn's grandstanding. Elspeth concentrates on her blade, the crackling golden godsend that is only a facsimile fas yeah, facsimil of the real thing, but it's her facsimile. She knows it will work for her. A little focus is all it takes to send a searing beam of light at Norn. Chunks of armor fall away, incinerated by the sword's purifying rays. A smoking pit rises from the Praetor's shoulder. This time, Norn doesn't scream. Instead, she raises a clawed hand. The bodies of the fallen soldiers around them, those already shocked off their useful parts, 
rise anew to encircle the two fighters. They just repeated a lot of things. Phyrexia shall never fall, Lauren says. Look around you, there is no death, El El Elspeth Terrell, only Phyrexia. She won't have long to act before the rise risen ranks can pin her down. Elspeth takes to the air once more. Maybe a bit higher now. Yet as she turns toward the fleeing mirrors, walls shoot up from the ground to block her path. Ones that rise to the endless heights of the sanctuary ceiling. You cannot run from us, Norn says. We are the ground beneath your feet. If she could do that all along, wouldn't she, wouldn't she have done it earlier? The air in your lungs. Everything that you lay eyes upon is Phyrexia. And Phyrexia is us. We are whole. Elspeth strikes at the wall. Sparks are the only sign of progress. The porcelain plates, plating does not yield to her blade. Up ahead, Nissa is closing on the Mirrens. Chandra is with them. The two of them were close, weren't they? Would Chandra be able to strike her down? Elspeth hesitates. If Chandra falters, Nissa will stop them. They need Elspeth. This fight is a distraction. <laughs> is this third person? She needs to get through the wall. If the others can hold out for just a few seconds. They need Elspeth. <laughs> Once more she concentrates on the blade. Every breath is setting it more bri brightly aglow. An aurora gleams across her armor. Behind and beneath her, the risen legions of Vorinclex and Jingitexius are on the attack. Lashes close around her wings. As one they pull back. Her muscles strain under the pressure. Why must you struggle so? Norn asks. You've always struggled against us. What is it you desire? If you have longed for a home, find it with us. If you have needs or friends, or friends or lovers, there are numberless legions of them among our ranks. You can still join us if you submit. I think it's really funny that she said she needed a lover. <laughs> It's like really not what she needs. Elspeth looks over her shoulder. Norn standing taller than ever. The added plates from the bridge and the fallen serving to stretch her even further. Bright viscera shines beneath the surface. The flayed flesh of which she is so proud. From the size of her, the cruel shapes of her armor and the cask-like grill of her new carapace. Which is this writer's favorite word. She looks nothing like home. <laughs> Alice Norn. Is war and death. A second set of lashes shoots from Norn's outstretched hand. Elspeth doesn't have any other choice. If she wants to stay aloft, she's going to have to get through Norn. A single chop of her blade se severs both sets of lashes. Momentum topples the Ketexians onto their backs. Where are we going? <laughs> well, where does this come from? Where did the Ketexians come from inside these walls? Elspeth flies toward Norn. You don't understand me. And not, like, these other predators have powers too. Jingitaxius and, and Vorinclex, they have powers too. Like, I can understand that we skip through the battle between Elish Norn and Shieldred, and the battle between Elish Norn uh, and uh, the red guy who's now also dead. Urvask. <laughs> but, but, like, you, you can't have them there and be so useless. But okay. Norn grabs one of Elspeth's wings, where Elspeth is high above in the air, <laughs> right? Did I miss something? Where, where do... Oh, Elspeth flies towards Norn. Yeah, yeah, you don't understand me. Okay, okay. Norn grabs one of Elspeth's wings in a foul par parody of a child holding a bird. She dangles Elspeth aloft. You longed for a purpose, for something greater than yourself. Your dearest heart's desire is a place where you might belong. A place of endless peace, where those you value are never far. A bright future, a fraction one. Norn's voice is joyously sick and sickly joyous. Elspeth cuts at Norn's grasping fingers, but though she draws blood, the Praetor does not let go. What does this form offer you that Phyrexia cannot? Peace, purpose, unity, yet they cannot grant you the last. Not in truth. Skin still binds you together, weakens you. To be Phyrexian is to be free from all such boundaries. What you've gained is a pale imitation of what we've perfected. Look around you. She does. And though she is loath to admit it, there is truth to what Norn is saying. 
The eyes that stare back at her from the army's ranks are all the same. Those that breathe do so in unison, and with those breaths, the sanctuary clicks and whirs, a machine key to the lives of its denizens. Nissa, Nahiri, Ajani, none of them seemed upset with their new states. On every one of them, she'd seen nothing but ecstasy. Home could be whatever you made it, and whomever you made it with. If she joined, she wouldn't be short of friends. She and Ajani would forge th Theros into the best possible form. Even Dexos could join them, undying, ageless, all one, forever. Angels are a pale shadow of divinity. We are its true light. From the heights of the sanctum, we see all things exactly as they are. After this battle, you will no longer exist as yourself. You will become one of them. All those years you looked with horror on Phoresis, and here you are, embracing it by another name. It isn't the same, Elspeth answers. Norn holds Elspeth upside down in front of her. They are eye to eye. <laughs> they are eye to porcelain. Elspeth dangling, which means anything on Elish Norn's body. Elspeth dangling meters over the ground. Norn's teeth gleam from the refracted light from Elspeth's blade. Then name a single difference. My purpose is divine. My evangels act as the swords of our divinity. Try again. What is this discussion even? This transformation hasn't changed anything about me. The lie stains her tongue the second she sold it. Those new wings of yours tell a different truth. Is this so difficult for you to understand? I, Elspeth starts. Another voice from behind. A familiar one. Jin Cataxius calls out to his leech. Wasn't he on the ground or something? Haven't we spent enough time on this? <laughs> Complete her and let us be on our way. Quiet, Norn shouts. At once her mood drops to furious rage. Oh, they are in, they are in love. She turns toward Jin Cataxius. A clash of metal. The sound of tearing flesh. Really? Jin Cataxius gurgles behind Elspeth. She realizes he was right. They spent enough time bickering like children. Her purpose is greater than this, right? <laughs> and Norn's reaction to insubordination tells Elspeth all she needs to know about their differences. She drives her sword into Norn's wounded sh shoulder, the only place she can reach from here. A spurt of blood <laughs> slicks Elspeth's armor as Norn at last lets go. Elspeth takes to the air again. Oh, I see the gold now, by the way. <laughs> Jane Gatexius' arm lays in a pool of oil not far from Norn. If she hadn't escaped, it might have been hers instead. Elspeth concentrates her power on her sword. Golden light flows, floods the platform. <laughs> You're right, Norn, she says. We aren't so different. We argue, we make mistakes. We have our own wants, dreams and desires. Norn's mouth wrenches in confusion and disgust. What blasphemy is this? We speak only for Rexia's will. Norn swings, but Elspeth ducks out of the way. You disagreed with Jin Cataxius, didn't you? Rexia wants you to ignore me, but you want differently. A shout peals from Norn's throat. Shards of fallen soldiers slice through the air, blades of the dead, each aimed at Elspeth. You, you understand nothing of Rexia. It's interesting how she's now being killed for her being imperfect, actually. No, the problem is, I understand you far too well, says Elspeth. The blade hums with power. She raises it high overhead. This is it. After all these years and all these dead. It, all these dead? It is finally time to strike down Elish Norn. Jin Gataxius will do nothing to help her. Oh, he isn't dead. Already his legions are charging toward the tree. Thousands of them for only a handful of mirrors. Spears land like hail across the bridge's surface. The person crumpling to the ground is that Melira, born without a trace of metal in her body, immune to the horrors of Phoresis. The girl once represented hope to the entire plane. Is that her crumpling to the ground? Koff's scream confirms it. It is not right to linger. Elspeth looks down on the praetor before her. A storm of blades swirl around Norn like the petals of a porcelain flower. Wait, so Elspeth now has the power to summon blades? We are beyond your comprehension, beyond your reach. When we have conquered the multiverse you've held so dear, you will kneel at our feet and bask in the glory of our creation. 
You will not ruin everything we've achieved, she says with a sword in her shoulder. Eons from now you will be forgotten, and we will remain the eternal here event, Elish Norn. Huh? Oh, Elspeth says this. Who is we? <laughs> it did it. That's just what I mean. You want people to worship Elish... Yeah, it was Elish Norn saying that. Wait. <laughs> Wait, eons from now you will be forgotten and we will remain the eternal hero vent, Elish Norn. Oh, she says about herself, third person again. That's just what I mean. You want people to worship Elish Norn, don't you? Phyrexia doesn't matter to you. It never has. Power is the only thing you care about. What? The swords around Elish Norn hang still and silent. A sanguine glow of rage builds from behind them. You. I hate you. Like the arrows of an army, the swords flying toward her, shards pulled fr now from the bridge, from the walls, from the very body of Phyrexia. So she's finally learned to speak for herself, has she? Well, that's no longer Elspeth's concern. The swords, however, only once shot at this. If Elspeth aligns everything right, she flies straight for the wall. At the very last moment she pulls back, momentum turns her stomach, holds her in a vice. But she makes a turn up and away. The blades don't have the space. With all her problems concentrated in one place, Elspeth <laughs> at last unleashes a ray of light. When the light fades, she's already halfway down the bridge toward the tree. The hopes of the multiverse rest on her plumed shoulders. She does not hear Jin Gataxius get to his feet, but she does hear Norn scream. Logical. Come back here. I w wasn't finished with you. She's dawdled too long. It is time to do the right thing. Ren and Chandra are almost to the tree. Elspeth's got to make sure they make it. <laughs>